Hello then guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to be talking about top 10 end game potion saving machines of the champions and basically which are the champions that I believe will help you save an absolute ton of potions. Now first things first I am largely focusing on champions that are in fact currently being used in end game content uh, therefore these will be kind of like more popular champion choices. I'm not trying to take anything away from champions like Wolverine or X23 or any other regeneration champions and stuff like that. But these are the champions practically that uh, I see most people using day to day that can go immensely large distance and basically cover you without needing a lot of potions and sometimes coming in clutch. There are quite often these situations myself when I have had a weak start at the beginning of the quest and then you just seemingly keep going and going and going using the one champion hardly taking any damage from fight to fight and that is due to several contributing factors and basically that is how this list is comprised of and that list uh, sorry spot number 10 is going to be a champion I don't have as a five star but I do definitely recognize and value one of his qualities and that is the fact that uh, if you basically parry or time your blocks well all of your blocks is going to be a uh, perfect block so you're going to take no chip damage whatsoever this also includes special attacks that are impossible to fully evade so long as you parry the first part of it you're going to be perfectly fine and stun immune opponents for instance if you actually do land a well-timed block on their first hit you can just easily take their entire combo in your block bait out that heavy attack and counter them that way therefore yes i do generally believe that sunspot can in fact be a really well and efficient potion saving machine unfortunately the champion doesn't have the broad broadest spectrum of utility but he has damage and uh, damage can definitely help and be used in pretty much any matchup uh, plus a large amount of debuffs is going to help you with some heal mitigation all that good stuff but the point is the guy can take shots in block especially if you time your first block as a well-timed block you can eat entire combos entire special attacks and walk away from that scot free therefore sunspot is one of those champions that can often really punch up the scale and even relatively low ranked sunspot can get through a lot of content that would otherwise be outside of the reach for many champions that are similarly ranked. And yeah, so he goes at spot number 10. I'm gonna go on to spot number nine is another champion I do not have as a five star. Uh, unfortunately, still. Uh, anyways, uh, it's Black Widow Clairvoyant. Now, uh, she has a fantastic heal. Only reason she is not higher up in the list is basically the fight duration because her damage really isn't the most impressive and quite often when you are in a fight with her you're in for the long haul and she's one of those champions that will do extremely well in content that's uh, kind of relatively uncomparable to the rank of her own she's not one of those champions that's gonna punch immediately hugely up the ladder uh, basically you must make sure that she's rank uh, appropriate PI appropriate when you bring her in into some difficult content but then that uh, that regeneration guaranteed on her level 2 while she is in her like bleed phase bleed curse is one of the more insane regenerations in game easy to access with her extra power gain being mystic you can basically spam those special attacks quite often especially in like bleed immune champions and that regeneration definitely can help her in the race in the contention for quite a bit plus the champion that has a lot of utility so this is a kind of like a bit opposite mirror side of sunspot sunspot doesn't really have as much of utility however he has damage and therefore he can finish these fights quicker he can uh, punch upwards claire cannot do that her damage is not nearly as impressive as sunspot is however she has a ton of utility and provided that she's fighting champions that are appropriately re-ranked she can do a lot of different stuff for you and she can sustain herself and with that we are going to move to spot number eight and spot number eight champion i do have this time we're going to go to our five stars and where is the guy and it's omega red now omega red uh, has several qualities that uh, can help him be clutch first and foremost if you are running suicides which you should be if you are playing omega red uh, you will automatically start every single fight with a heal from willpower because bleed is going to be hardly doing any damage to you and that's going to net uh, some positive heal to you 
Additionally, uh, Omega Red, uh, by playing wisely, carefully and slowly, uh, you can basically avoid contact with opponent for large majority of the time and just drop your heavies and manage to refresh them at appropriate times. Additionally, obviously you have the heal on level one and on level three and the level three heal is huge. You can heal close to like 50% of your health, I believe. And that's massive if you have the 30 spores on. Plus that will come with a power drain, so you can easily drop that level three when opponent would be at level three of their own. Only reason why Omega Red is not higher in this list is simple fact that quite often Omega Red is one of those champions that does in fact take a lot of cheap damage and you do have to be extremely careful while playing him. He does not have stuff like perfect block or huge block proficiency. He does have the regions, but the regions uh, quite often also in interrupt your damage output. Uh, so you kind of have to be careful. There are all the necessary components that are needed to make him sustainable questing machine. And he certainly is one. However, he can't do it as effortless. He does not include this regeneration in his like base cycle, I would say. And while he is doing so quite often, he does take some chip damage. Uh, but all in all, he's definitely a fantastic questing machine that can definitely save everybody a lot of potions with his immunity, with his huge damage output, a large amount of versatility, ability to bypass all the passive damage on his tentacle hits is also incredibly helpful. And for spot number seven, we are going to go with another mutant, which is actually somewhere nearby here. And there we are, uh, it's Namor. Now Namor uh, has his party trick. If you have him at max sig and if you are running suicides, basically while you are punching, punching your opponent, your opponent's gonna be taking the suicide damage instead of you and you still get the willpower heal. So every couple of combos you get to heal like a couple of percent of your health and you have that available throughout the entire fight. Additionally, plus the heal available whenever you spam your special attacks is gonna help you offset the recall, especially if you are already kind of like in the bottom half of your health bar at that point, or there's no recall in special threes, which is also something Namor spams fairly frequently. Uh, so you can see how that all adds up and definitely it does help uh, Namor to kind of last quite large amount of time uh, throughout several different fights, uh, mitigate all this cheap damage uh, by often just kind of altering your playstyle. Quite often you can see Namor players just simply drop the full four hits an opponent block, dash back, do it again, just to get that little bit of a break in the fight, get that healing going, recuperate some percent of health, and Namor, just like that, running suicides, becomes incredibly sustainable. Now, that is not to say that he is not a sustainable guy without the Suicide Masteries, because shooting each and every single special attack will still benefit you some heal, and if you are not running the suicides, obviously you're not running the recoil, and you don't have that to worry about, so there is still, again, one more way how to mitigate some... Uh, damage or chip damage that you have taken but overall i definitely do prefer this guy with suicide masteries and i just feel that it's extremely cheeky kind of way to how to gain health by making your opponent take the damage instead but still keeping the heal from willpower so i kind of find it funny i suppose and yeah i think he deservedly is on this list and it's spot number six and in this case is going to be a glass cannon champion, but that still can save you a lot of potions. And I'm putting her on this list uh, simply because I have seen many people uh, do that and I have done it myself quite often on many occasions where you just take ghost and you make a mistake and you get chipped down to like 15% health and then you pull yourself together and then you last like an entire lane with that ghost on 10 or 15 percent health uh, just because in between her ability to bypass recoil with hood synergy in between her natural ability to phase all the incoming attacks and never realistically having to rely on parry to find openings uh, she kind of can ignore all the chip damage oh, relatively you can kind of like contribute down to the factor of skill and that means like you're not making mistakes and if you're not making mistakes and other champions don't take as much damage but they still do and she doesn't. She only takes damage when you make a mistake and when you make a big mistake. So despite being a glass cannon champion without any regeneration abilities, uh, she's still fantastic to last for a really long amount of time for being extremely clutch, uh, especially with that Hyperion, sorry, with that uh, Hood synergy when she can tank special threes, 
when uh, she can ignore a lot of passive fun and interactive damage plus that all combined with her ability to turn all of damage over time debuffs into fury by to increase her damage output in itself she's definitely one of those champions that you can kind of pick up and uh, it all depends on you and she can definitely save you a lot of items a lot of struggles in the game if you're not making too many mistakes yourself she's again one of those champions you, where you can get clipped and in an instant you'll lose vast majority of your health but then again if you pull yourself together you can clear the next 10 fights without losing a single hp and i have had the cases where uh, i get saved by heimdall's energy and end up at like one hp after the end of the fight and then five fights later because of recovery mastery she's actually at like a couple thousand hp or a couple hundred hp because of the recovery mastery and the fact that she never took even a single uh point of damage in her block uh, so she can definitely come in clutch uh, but there are reasons i'm not realistically rating her higher because yes if you do make a mistake she does not really have a way to recover from that uh, and when down she goes down she goes she's not gonna go up without any potions and uh yeah next champion next champion is going to be a skill champion in this case and the argumentation for this guy is fairly simple he has double the health pool right he, he is perfectly usable, nice, good, bleed skill champion with somewhat decent set of abilities and a decent amount of bleed and damage in his first life form, in his like first set form, which can last for like many fights. He is fairly tanky, his block proficiency is alright, he's not like a glass jaw that can't take a punch, he actually can, his block is solid and he can do decently well for you as a, a life model deco in this case but once his first life is chipped down to zero and then the real nick fury comes out and then you have this whole additional health pool to play around with this massive increase in damage output and the fights just get completely different speed if before they might have dragged a bit now he's gonna shoot straight them straight through them even if the opponent's health pulls are like 500k and that's the good part about nick fury that's what i really like about the guy that you can you don't have to necessarily have to kill off his first life you can just go on take all the chip damage make some mistake here and there uh don't worry about his health too much and then once the second life kicks in you basically shift yourself into the gear and you just race towards the finish line and this is a champion that definitely definitely can eat up a lot of your mistakes missed out intercepts miss awaited special attacks and will forgive you for that and realistically at some point you get rewarded for that by this whole huge damage increase and i absolutely love it i love it uh he is amazing champion i think he's arguably the most influential champion to come out this year in terms of what he does by himself plus all of his synergies i think he definitely has left the biggest mark at least on my account in 2019 which is another video coming soon at some point uh we just have to wait for silver server first uh but yeah so nick fury gets spot number five in my opinion completely deservedly uh, and now we're gonna move to top four in fourth place we are going to take uh, where is this guy? Captain America Infinity War. So Cap has several things going for him that make him an absolute questing machine, regardless of what kind of opponents he faces. Because uh, when you parry with Cap, if you have parry mastery maxed out, you pretty much never take any damage whatsoever. So that means like if you're 1% health and you don't mess up your parry, he can go and go and go and still get the job done. And he's one of pretty much the very, very few champions in the game who can do that. This guy parries pretty much perfectly, unless there are some other nodes or some specific stat anomalies involved, he will have a perfect parry in vast majority of the matchups, which is so incredibly useful to, to his ability toolkit. And that makes him amazing. Additionally, even if you do fail that parry, the dude can block for days. <laughs> like even against stacked 6.3 opponents, the guy can just take a hit and a block. That's as simple as that. Even if it's not a perfect block, nothing bad has happened. You have a time to kind of like pull yourself together. Your health bar has been barely affected. 
and you can just keep on going so he's fairly forgiving uh, to when you make a mistake additionally to all of that he has this glancing ability and every time opponent strikes you you have a chance to have that hit being glanced and with that basically they cannot be critical and they hardly deal any damage so even when you make a big doo-doo and you get completely comboed into the face unlike the most champions he has a very good chance to survive that combo or even a couple of those combos and prevent opponent's abilities from activating because when the hits are getting glanced then they lose all the offensive ability accuracy and there is just such a tankiness built into this guy in addition to obviously the versatility and all of the cool stuff he can bring to the table either with synergies or his signature ability or just pure sheer damage output and he definitely is one of those champions that you can make a mistake here and there but you can have him from one fight to another to another and to another and you can enter in a fight with like 15 percent of the health and you can be perfectly fine you can come out of that fight with 15 percent health and definitely highly value this guy for being one of the hardest working champions in the contest that is proving to be useful in pretty much every new piece of content that comes out and now finally i'm getting exhausted here uh we're getting to spot number three and spot number three is going to be void but it's only going to be with killmonger synergy though uh for those of you who do not know uh the killmonger synergy uh, what it does for void where is it oh i need to find killmonger basically what Killmonger Synergy does for Void is every time Void applies a debuff on opponent, you gain a 1% of your total health pool as a regeneration back to yourself. Void being Void applies debuff, debuff to opponents ferociously and constantly throughout the fight. And the best bit of it is, even if you don't directly do something because it's something that passively also happens in background, and even if you just kind of dance about and hit opponent's block you'll still get a small passive heal and when you say one percent it doesn't really sound all that impressive but then you have like max recovery mastery which makes it like 1.15 percent then you have the simple fact that void has a huge helpful even as a rank four five star here for instance he has like 27 uh, and a half k helpful that's massive it's one of the like top five biggest in game i believe and that one percent does mean a lot especially when you're going up against like harder more stronger opponents that have larger health pools uh, the better you manage yourself you are able to kind of sustain your void from fight to fight to over the fight and it's just awesome in addition to all of that obviously void has all of these debuffs which also do something right and what do they do one of them is actually preventing opponents from pretty much like critting like ever on you so he can take a punch like a champ as well and all that combined kind of huge health pool stable passive regeneration opponents not critting at you that makes void into like one huge survivability machine that is great for kind of like slower more consistent but cheap on potions questing i think brian grant even took him in labyrinth of legends to prove that and i in my opinion he succeeded very well with that and yeah therefore i think void gets that spot number three because he not only has this region he also has damage mitigation and he has a huge 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 health pool to go along with it and uh <laughs> now top two spots top two spots both will be occupied by cosmic champions and in this case i will put in second place though which in my opinion is arguably the most hardworking champion in the game this is a champion that often gets outshined by let's call these mega star damage numbers or some new toys that appear on the block or whatever but in my opinion he's one of the most hardworking champions that is pretty much useful everywhere and depending on how patiently how well you can play this guy can be an absolute powerhouse but there is a larger learning curve to this guy than most people realize which i might get to a bit later anyways what makes this guy so good so first things first he does have a regeneration that people do underestimate however combined with signature ability that regeneration is act actually extremely potent and you can trigger it and say up to two times in a three minute let's say aq match or standard act six fight 
you probably can do it more than twice if you choose to. Uh, but there's that. So he has regeneration, which is potent, which recovers a large chunk of his health very easily. Another great thing for this guy, two beasts so sustainable alongside the region, is a huge damage output. He can put out some insane damage numbers and seal out the fights extremely quickly. Uh, quite often, uh, even stun locking opponents and dropping like special twos several times in a row and just closing fights out really explosively. And one of the most impressive things about this guy is his power gain and the fact that he can get to specials easily without you actually having to hit the opponent in between your special attacks. So what this guy is capable of doing is basically never having to parry if you choose not to or always just constantly special intercepting the fights and there's just so many things you can do with Hyperion if you are aware and able of what this character does and put all of that together with the regen which you can call upon relatively easily drop a level 3 dash back hold block done regions there and that region is putting in some serious work and at the meantime you don't have the power gain buffs but you can still get your damage output via furies and it just works out well. It just works out well. Hyperion, in addition, obviously, is also a solid lad with a big health pool, decent stats, and can take a punch, can take a hit in a block and move forward. And uh, lately, more and more, he's definitely becoming my favorite AQ champ, because no matter what happens, especially if I don't run Suicide, I should say, if I don't run Suicide Masteries, he probably is my favorite AQ champion because with suicides it's a bit harder you can't spam your special attacks you kind of lose quite a bit of versatility of this character but without suicides he's an absolute ace that can alter his playstyle damage type damage style to whatever is needed at the time and he can answer a lot of specific nodes in map 7 he can deal with he can simply out damage can't stop one stop he can deal with buffed up because he can get the furies he can uh, deal with uh, Pleasure to Burn, because he can spam level 1s and incinerate opponents. He can deal with this track because he can spam level 1 and incinerate opponents, and so on and so forth. And you get where I'm going with this. He just does so much and so effortlessly that I absolutely love him. And I think he has saved me a lot of potions, thank you. And lastly, lastly, now many people will disagree with this, and uh, they will be right, because Corvus has lost... Uh, some of his dominance in later chapters of Act 6, and I will agree with that, and variants 2 and 3 definitely have not been kind to him. However, where this is point, because Corvus can be played also differently when you mega boosted, Corvus is going to be doing some crazy damage, put some cosmic power boosts, he can still be insane even in 6.3, but overall when it comes to day-to-day -day game, uh, especially if you are a suicide player, Corvus is invaluable, invaluable machine of potion saving. So just like Omega Red does, he also doesn't take bleed damage and Corvus doesn't take any bleed damage whatsoever while he has Glaive Charge active. That means every time you enter a fight with Suicide Masteries, you will automatically be healing yourself up. So even if you enter with 1% or 2%, which can be the case quite often, you will uh, still have that room for taking a hit in a block or landing a parry and likely finishing the fight at like 5, 6, 10, whatever percent and you can fight freely. Now the second bit why he saves so many items and a lot of endgame content is because he finishes the fight so quickly combined with that heal he and that window where he keeps healing. Uh, many of the fights are typically over by the half minute mark with Corvus, especially if you have a charge or two on him. Additionally, the fact that he can absolutely never die from any damage over time debuff if you are skilled enough and if you are maintaining your blade charges is impressive as they come. So he can take all of damage over time stuff, whether it's AQ, whether it's variant, whether it's anything else. Uh, only thing that is kind of a requirement that you have an opponent that you can fully away the special attack from. Other than that, Gorus fantastically deals with all of that. And if that's not even enough, uh, that cheat death mechanic can, works so well together with you timing out or you messing up and losing your connection, what's called on accident and AQ. And the thing is with Corvus, you can pretty, if you're running Corvus realistically, there's no reason why you should be using any revives because whenever stuff goes wrong, 
you know what to do and then you can log back in the game and it doesn't matter if you have half uh, of your health pool or even if you have only one HP left. Corvus Suicide, you still can start healing in play as normal, it can deal incredible amount of damage, you can just move on. And when it comes to AQ, I don't think there has ever been more kind of simple, effective, to a point dummy proof champion, because even when you mess up, you're still not gonna go down straight away, you still have the time, because he's gonna start consuming your glaive charges, where you can do whatever you have to do, and Chorus is just insane when it comes to aq some relatively easier quests some early act six stuff and a lot of variant he can just save so much uh, items and potions and as well when it came to dealing with the final ultron boss in variant for instance okay he doesn't he is not immune to passive shocks but so long as you don't get hit he's not gonna die from them anyways you don't have gladiator hulk for starburst lanes no problem chorus isn't gonna die from that stuff anyways so on and so forth. So Corvus time and time again has proved his potion saving ability in vast array of content and I love him for that. I will always respect him for that and even though like I must admit that he is losing more and more of his relevance due to very specific and in my opinion intentional designs in Act 6 to prevent certain top champions from dominating them. All in all, when it comes to everyday life, Corvus still is a prime prize winner of uh, basically your penny saver, your potion saver, I suppose, especially when it comes to AQs and stuff like that, because there is nobody that does a clutch fight better than a Corvus Glaive. And yeah, that will pretty much do for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that sub button, and I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya!